Five players that I absolutely need to draft in every single league. Insane breakout players with extreme value. Starting with my favorite one on the video, Drake London. I mean, I need him. If I have to overdraft him, overdraft him, I'm fine. Uh, he is at receiver 12 across the board, average draft position, and consensus rank. I think he's better than that. He broke out last year. He's about to break out even further this year. I mean, he broke out with Desmond Ritter, Taylor Heineke as his quarterback. He was living up to that first-round hype, an absolute stud. Then the Falcons hire Raheem Morris. He comes in, if you saw his first press conference as the Atlanta Falcons head coach, he raved about the talent the Falcons had, but he specifically pointed out Drake London. Um, so big plans there for him in Atlanta. Now he has Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins is a very good quarterback. Is he elite? No. But what is he great at? He's a very consistent, accurate passer that sees open receivers and, again, is very accurate hitting them. Justin Jefferson is Justin Jefferson because he's that good. But Kirk Cousins definitely helped him out a little bit. And Drake London had that potential as well. So, I mean, he could even take his game up another level with Kirk in there. He is going to see a lot of targets, a lot of action. He's going to make some big-time plays with his hands and after the catch. This is going to be – he's not going to go in the first round of drafts, but it's going to feel like as the year goes on, like this is a first-round fantasy option here. Strength of schedule also helps. I'm not a big strength of schedule guy. It's not going to de you know decide my pick, but it's a bonus. That's a bonus, I suppose. But him getting better and now having Kirk Cousins, that is everything. Uh, next on this list, a rookie, another receiver, Malik Neighbors. He is tearing it up in camp right now, but – which is a good sign. They're going to feature him in that offense. They're going to get him the ball, but forget that. Like just, just go off what we know. This is a dynamic receiver. You get him the ball in any way you can. You get him the ball behind the line of scrimmage, just beyond it, in the in traffic over the middle of the field, deep down the field. We're seeing all of it in camp. We saw all of it at LSU. He was highly productive. It's a guy that you just you just get the ball to. You just get the ball to in any way. Um, so that's what's going to happen with the Giants. I mean, it's set up even more perfectly for the Giants. You know, with him on the Giants. People kind of get worried because Daniel Jones is his quarterback. Yeah, I understand that, but they're going to have to simplify things for Daniel Jones, like they did a couple years ago, which it worked out very well. They were a very, you know, small ball type team. And now they don't have Saquon Barkley. This is the feature player without Saquon Barkley there, even though he's not a running back. They are going to get him the ball. He's going to lead rookies in touches. He is going to lead all rookies in touches, you know, non-quarterbacks, obviously. Um, they're going to hand him the ball, end arounds. They're going to throw him screen. They're, again, they're going to give him the ball anywhere on the field, uh, you know, around that receiver 20, 23, 24 range. Don't be afraid to take him earlier, you know, just because he's a rookie. He is going to, it's bottom line. You know, they're not just going to hand the ball to Devin Singletary all day. Uh, you know, they're not going to throw to a uh, Wandale Robinson could be very solid. He does have durability concerns, but they're not going to throw to him all day. They're going to get the ball to Malik Neighbors in several different ways. He's involved in set, not just the passing game or the pass catching game. He's involved in so many different ways. Do not be afraid of this rookie. This is the top fantasy rookie. I can guarantee it. Uh, next, we got a Green Bay Packer, their new running back, Josh Jacobs. Uh, I cannot believe where he is at. Running back 12, average draft position, running back 15, cons average consensus rank. That is crazy to me. I mean, the, I know the Packers, the highlight right now is Jordan Love, what he got to at the end of last year. And he's a, you know, he, he can throw the shit out of the ball, obviously. But we cannot forget what LaFleur loves, what this team is built for. Like at the offensive line, they come out and they punch teams in the mouth. That is that is their game plan every single week. They out physical teams, they go fast, and that really opens up everything else. Josh Jacobs is kind of just getting going. Like he's just in the prime of his running back career. Um, I feel like he's getting more durable to me, but uh, the Packers, this is the best system by far that he's ever going to be in. The pack, I mean, Aaron Jones was really, really good. Packers star running back. They were opening wide open holes for him and he was doing his part too. He's really good. Josh Jacobs is better than Aaron Jones. Who's been a star and he's entering his prime. He's fresh. He's healthy. He is entering the prime of his career. He is going to dominate. It's like, it's not even, it feels not even fair to me. He is going to dominate on that, in that offense from week one all the way through. I see a scenario. Some people might think this is bold. It should not be bold. I mean, even looking what he did with the Raiders the last couple of years, I think with this year alone, I think we could be talking about the end of the year as maybe the best running back of 2024. Like he's going to be that good 
with the perfect fit of the Green Bay Packers and their system, their offense line, teams worried about the deep ball. He, he It's an absolute steal if it's running back anywhere 12 through 15. Absolute steal. Uh, I know they have other backs. This is their guy, though. They paid him a lot up front you know, earlier in the years in his contract. This is their guy. Um, Aaron Jones was so damn good for them. This guy's going to be even better for them. I, I you know, I, I cannot wait to watch it. And we got back-to-back Packers. Jaden Reed, I, I love Jaden Reed. He was way better than anyone expected last year. So that's a good start. He's ahead of schedule. So that's, you look at the trend, how he got better and better. That's fantastic. But bottom line is here, especially for half PPR, PPR and PPR leagues, they just get him the ball. I mean, so many gadget plays, so many you know behind the line of scrimmage. You know, some of them are runs, but it still has potential to to be yards, to be points. But he was a touchdown machine, an absolute touchdown machine in the red zone. And again, all this production, all all these snap, the the amount of snaps, all the looks, they increased as the year went on. That is a great sign for this year. But the big thing here, people didn't realize. Yeah, he was better than expected. Yeah, he was really good. But some people just want to call him like a gadget type guy with maybe a little bit more. I say that's wrong as the year went on especially late down the year look at the Vikings game was a big one down the stretch this guy developed more and more got better downfield excellent route runner super quick super shifty can get open he is adding more down the field and with his route running to his game this guy has special a special future Uh, look at the rest of the receivers they didn't add another big time receiver they feel like they have one here yeah they're pretty deep they have number of receivers uh, but Christian Watson, you know, today he's already dealing with an injury. He's very good, but we it's you hate to say it because the Packers have, you know, they they could use Christian Watson because they have Super Bowl potential, but he's probably going to miss some time this year. Uh, you know, not saying because of the injury right now, right off the bat, but the chances are there's going to be some times where he's coming out. They can't go full go with him. Jaden Reed's that guy. And Romeo Dubs is really good, but that's kind of like a, a specific type of receiver, downfield, contested catch, possession type guy. Reed is their guy. So, um, you know, and I love their running game with Josh Jacobs, like I talked about, but look at where he's at. Receiver 35, 37 range, strength to schedule second. That's absurd. Like for a very powerful, explosive team with the, with the explosive quarterback, you know, talking about his arm, uh, that is insane value, especially where he left off at the end of last year. They have big plans Big plans for for him. And remember, the Packers were always picky with drafting receivers. They need this specific type of guy, and they're usually pretty good. They had to have Jaden Reed, la- you know, last year's draft uh, fairly earlier than where they were taking receivers. So they they know what they're doing here. This is a special special player. And then one more, I, I've preached about him uh, quite a bit in the in the recent past, Dalton Kincaid. Uh, and, and he is the value isn't crazy because tight end five that's like right around probably where he should be. But I'd probably take him over over some bigger names ahead of him. Uh, I just have to have him. Uh, you know this guy was a very productive receiving tight end at Utah, and they took him in the first round because they had a plan of having him as a mismatch. And, and he was pretty solid last year. There was some times where when they switch offensive coordinators, he would disappear a little bit. Uh, but now they're kind of set and ready to go with him going into the season. And they are moved on from Stephon Diggs, big-time receiver. They added some other receivers, but everyone's like trying to figure out who's going to be their top receiver. I'd say you're looking at the wrong position. You are looking. You should be looking at the tight end, Dalton Kincaid. This guy's basically going to play a receiver. Of course, he can play tight end. He's going to play in line at times, but they have Dawson Knox for that. He is going to line up outside. He's going to line up in the slot, and he is going to feast. He is their top receiver, the top mismatch guy out there. You know, they're going to have times where, you know, Curtis Samuel or Shakur in the slot and Kincaid plays outside or he plays in the slot and their focus is Keon Coleman or Curtis Samuel could play outside as well. Faldis Scantling, those guys on the outside. The focus is going to be tr- trying to figure out what Kincaid's doing because that is where the play starts. Um, this is, I think he's going to be their top receiver and he's not even a receiver. I think he's going to be the top option in the pass game for Josh Allen. Extreme, you could. It's a guarantee that he's gonna be very productive. He's gonna catch the ball. He's gonna get open. He's gonna catch the ball, and he's gonna rack up some yards after the catch. He's an absolute weapon for the Buffalo Bills, and I think they moved on from Diggs with, with you know. People probably think because they had it in mind that you know they added receivers already, they can add more, um, and they had they absolutely had to add, add more. But I think the reason they were okay with doing it believe it or not, was because their tight end, Dalton Kincaid. I actually think that was the main thing. Like, that is our mismatch weapon that's going to line up everywhere. So I just have to have him. I, I had to have him in one league last year. I, I, I need to have him 
you know, in, in, in every league. It's just a guy. And it's fun, too, because in the past, I've always been a believer in, uh, you know, I, I – you know, my philosophy and it worked out was you have to get one of the absolute stud tight ends, like the best tight ends. And if you don't in your draft, uh, you're better off just waiting the next tier guys versus the late, the, you know, the guys, the third tier guys, not much of a difference. You'd rather draft a big time receiver running back or get your quarterback in that range than take those mid tier guys. We've added a little bit onto that top tier. I think going into this year, there's more guys you know, in Joku kind of getting, getting in that conversation. Maybe Pitts finally gets in there. Cause he has Kirk cousins at quarterback. Kincaid is most definitely, uh, you know, up there. Trey McBride's being added up there who I like a lot as well. Uh, and, and maybe a rookie Brock Bowers. So that tier one is a little longer. That's good news for everyone. One, there's not a whole lot of panic, but this is a guy that this is basically like drafting another receiver that you get to put in the, in the tight end spot. It, it really is. He's different than the rest of them. He is definitely different. Um, so I, for those reasons, I have to have him. So these this is probably my other favorite one. I drink London and Kincaid. I like the Packers guys a lot uh, as well. Um, but yeah, Kincaid, you know, being that tight end for me that I absolutely have to have. Uh, we did a recent video on who I am taking first overall, and you potentially, and then I'll have that pop on your screen, and you potentially could get him second, third, maybe, or fourth overall. So watch that video. A video full of breakout stars to watch as well. Check it out. Join us for our in-season content. Important links pinned in the comments. Going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.